Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of The Joy of Puzzles. Today I have for you Animals of Africa. This was published in 1997 by W.B. Adams Puzzles. Strangely enough, I was not able to find a website for this manufacturer. I rooted around on Amazon and eBay, and while I list the manufacturer, there were no links. So you can still buy these puzzles, but I can't seem to find the, the folks that produce them and go directly to their catalog. The artwork is by Wayne Still, another person I was not able to find a website for. For this puzzle, my strategy was pretty straightforward. Uh, the border, which again I'll do 90% of the time first, and then I figured I would go after the, the zebra, the cheetah, the, the, the bright yellow suns, and the clouds and the sky, the blue water, and then get around to the rest of the other critters that are on the puzzle. Now immediately as I started building this, I noticed there was a problem. I have the border, and you'll see me pause a couple times, and I realized the image is reversed compared to the box cover. Kind of annoying, uh, I will admit that I had to constantly readjust and reevaluate where I was putting pieces down just as a spatial reference because it was all backwards. Uh, I don't know how those things happen, I'm sure. The Adams Company would have something to say on the matter, but nothing to nothing I can do about that now. Uh, this is a 550-piece puzzle. The total build time was just under two and a half hours, but I did have some help in this case. Um, so it's you know it's a quick build, family fun, nice puzzle. Uh, as always, I'm going to rate and review the puzzle in a number of categories. I have four that I like to use. The first is the most basic, and that is the actual material of the, the puzzle itself, the paperboard quality. The Adams, WB Adams Puzzle Company uses recycled materials, which in my experience is hit or miss as far as how, how nice the puzzle pieces are, and in this case they actually were very decent. At no point did the puzzle feel flimsy, the pieces didn't get kind of stuck together when you tried to fit them, it was always clear where they went. And that brings me to the next category, which is the puzzle cut quality. I'm going to give this one a 4, above average. You could literally close your eyes, slide a piece into place, and feel it snap into place. You could almost hear it going, dropping it to the right spot, so that was great. Um, it makes for a very enjoyable build because you don't feel like you have to fuss and search and hunt and peck every time you're you're putting that piece that looks right but isn't. And that's particularly important when you get to the parts of the puzzle which are, I won't say monochrome, but you know, the dark colors or the, uh, the large expanses of a single color where you have to have the lighting just right to, to see them. Puzzle difficulty. Uh, a bit subjective. Uh, here again, I'm going to actually rate this a 2, uh, but that's not a bad thing. A difficult puzzle it may not be what you're looking for. At 550 pieces, this is meant for, I believe, 12 and up, according to the box, and I would argue even younger that you can put this together, a novice can build this puzzle pretty quickly and have a good time. Just not difficult, that's all. The most subjective of all my categories is what I refer to as frameability. If I was the type of person that would seal this puzzle and, and want to hang it somewhere, would this make the cut for me? And the answer is probably no. I give it a three. It's average. Um, this would make a good poster for a young adult maybe in their room if they were into animals or into that type of scenery. But for me personally, it's just an average puzzle. There's nothing exceptional about the, the picture as far as something that I saw as artistic and wanted to hang up. Uh, no, nothing against Mr. Wayne Still, but I don't think this was intended to hang in a museum. I think this was exactly what it was, a puzzle for young adults. Now overall, you can't just add these scores together and come up with a number because a low rating in something like difficulty is not necessarily a mark against a puzzle and its enjoyability, but I will give this a 3. The uh, overall experience, yeah, I would build this one again. I've built it. I have not built this one before. Uh, I would build it again though and enjoyed most of the experience, again, except for that pesky image being uh, 
reversed. It kind of made me pause a couple times as I struggle to uh, mentally adjust to the backwards image. In this case, as you watch the puzzle build, you can see I basically stuck to my strategy. The, the zebra um, I thought would have more of an impact as far as how large it was, but it really was a small piece, so it wasn't as effective as I had hoped to create a foundation to build the rest of the puzzle. The cheetah was decent size. Um, I often try to build lines across the puzzle, connect the two borders in, in multiple areas, kind of quadrant off sections, it makes it easier to, to chip away at the features that are there. The other thing you'll see me do quite often in the puzzle, when building the puzzle, is rotate the puzzle box. Uh, I find that before going through the exercise of flipping every piece over so you can see them just simply rotating the box 90 degrees, shifting the pieces around, rotating them, pick through it a little, rotate it again, do it again. I find a lot of pieces that way without having to spend all that time flipping pieces. I prefer not to flip all the pieces until I'm about two-thirds of the way through the puzzle. I feel like until that point I can still effectively build the puzzle without doing that. In this case, my son joined me in the build, so the, t the build time does go up a little uh, to see the, the two people chipping away at it. And then there's the, with two people, you want to switch boxes once in a while. You kind of pick through them, you're, the area that you were working on or uh, focusing on, you find you have run its course with the selection you have. So you swap with the other person and, and um, chip away at it that way. for the glare across the puzzle. I am still working on some lighting challenges for my puzzle endeavors. Um, hopefully in the future I can have that fixed. Um, it, it shows up more vividly in the camera when you're building the puzzle so you don't notice it as much. It is something that I'm working on. It is always satisfying when you're building a puzzle and you've created a little little island of pieces that suddenly snap into place and uh, puts the rest of the puzzle in perspective. You see that happen a lot and I'm sure it happens to the rest of you as well. I never enjoy the hunt and peck method, which seems to be the end result every time when you get down here. It's now all these green pieces that look quite a bit alike. And, uh, it's just one of those things that's part of the puzzle, part of the process, but it is my least favorite. At the end here you'll see me disassemble the puzzle. Um, and the little note I wrote in there is the year and month that I built the puzzle and it wasn't complete or not. So if I ever open the box, I know when I did it last. I also put all the edge pieces in a little Ziploc baggie. Uh, so the next time I build the puzzle, I don't spend the first 20 minutes looking for those pieces. Thanks for watching.